In this video, we're going to actually get started on our weapon switching. So that way we can have, you know, multiple weapons on ours, and we can easily switch between them. So, I'm trying to think of a good way to do this, but first off, I want to go ahead and set up the input. We're going to go to settings, project settings, input, make a new action mapping, and I'm just going to use a uh, Yes, one on my, actually, let's see. What, no, wait, this is the name. What am I doing? Let's call this one switch weapon or switch next weapon. I'm going to do mouse wheel up. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Go to our character base.cpp and find our inputs. So our setup input components right here. We're gonna bind the action. We're gonna change the name up. So we named it switch next weapon. So then we need to create a function for it. So we're gonna go over here to characterbase.h and let's find the on above on fire. I'm going to do void switch next weapon and create the implementation. So we're going to be doing this strictly on the client for right now. I'm going to move this up to our attach or right underneath our attach, uh, attach weapon because that's what we're going to be using for this. And we're going to set it up so this input calls switch next weapon. So I'm going to print a log. And now we need to kind of think about how we want to really deal with the weapons. So currently, what we're going to do is a check. So if current weapon, we want to first off check and see if there's another element in our weapon array. So we have our weapon index here. And our weapon index by default set to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to get that. So we're going to check our weapon index plus one. So if weapon array weapon index plus one, meaning that it's valid, and I'm going to store it. So it's kind of going to pull out a value or a variable. So it's going to be a weapon base next weapon equals weapon array weapon index plus one. And if this is valid, then this if statement will be true and we have access to the next weapon. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to want to hide our current weapon. So current weapon, let's see, set hidden and pass in true. So we're just gonna hide it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to next weapon. So we're going to set current weapon equals next weapon. <clears throat> and from there, we're going to want to pretty much change it up. So we're going to do, we're just going to simply call this for now. But what we're going to want to do in the future is probably set it up so that every, all the guns are attached to the socket but we just hide and unhide them. So that's what I think I'm going to do here. So we have this already set up. Then we would what we would do is current weapon, set hidden, and pass in false. So we have this set up. Now what we want to do, I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick compile to save some time in the future. Close down the editor. What we're going to want to do is in begin play, we're going to want to spawn more than just the one weapon. So we're going to want to spawn like the M1 carbine as well. So we need a way to really do this for testing. So I'm going to add another class variable like this. So starting weapon class. I want to name this one second weapon class. Then I'm also going to add just a third. 
like so. So then what we can do, wait for this to finish. We're gonna take, pretty much gonna be spawning them all. So we're going to, after this, I'm going to do an if statement. So if, copy that, a weapon base, weapon equals to spawn it. And we're going to change this one to second weapon class, like so. And if it's valid, we're going to do weapon set hidden true. And we're going to want to attach it to the hand as well. But we're going to, this is going to be for testing. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually just attach it to us by default. We're going to take weapon, attach to your opponent, and then attach it to our hand. But we're going to hide it. So then we're going to do this one more time. Change this one to third weapon class and do the same thing. All right, so let's go ahead and just compile and see roughly where we're at in this. And once we do like get everything working, we're gonna to want to make sure that we end up if the uh, if this is out of bounds, we will revert back to the first index. So that way we uh, we cycle through. We don't just hit a wall and we can no longer change weapons. I just gotta to remember to open the player class and set it up. Good old 10 second pause. It's so annoying. All right, let's open up our player blueprint. Over here, second weapon class, we're going to choose, I guess, the 1911, the third one, the M1 carbine. File save. Save all. And test it. Go scroll wheel up. And we have a crash. So we are trying to access something that is out of bounds. So one thing that we also never did, well, we know that this is an issue, we never added the, these uh, weapons to our array. Where the heck did it just scroll me to? What we're going to do is weapon array dot add. We're going to add weapon, just like so. Do the same thing for that one. So what we're going to do is get the num number. So if weapon array dot num is greater than weapon index plus one, then we will continue. And what we're going to want to do is set weapon index. We're just going to increment that and remove the plus one here. Then what we're going to do is if this fails, we're going to set weapon index back to zero and it should kind of continue the cycle. So I'm going to do a quick little else. Weapon index equals zero. And what we're actually going to do in here is a little recursion. So what we also want to check is if weapon index is greater than zero, then we will perform it. So I'll explain why here in a minute. So we set weapon index back to zero, and we're going to go through and we're going to, oh, no, that would still kind of make it fail. So I'm just going to leave it for now. And I'll think about it kind of later on. Gee, weird, it crashed again, or, well, froze.
make sure it's still set up, which it is. Now let's see what happens. So I'll scroll well up. Right, so we switch to a different gun. As you can see, that kind of detached. And we switch again. We're back at the M1 carbine. My problem is these are floating. <laughs> so let's look at it. So more specifically, let's look at here we are. We need to kind of think here. So we're hiding the current weapon. And what I'm thinking of instead, what we'll end up doing is actually trying to hide the actual mesh itself. That way everything's still the same. So what I'm going to do is in weapon base, I'm going to create a new function and return the skeletal mesh. Let's do it here. New function, blueprint. Eh, no, I can't see why we would do this from anything from blueprint here. We're just going to do class a or u skeletal mesh component get weapon mesh. And we're going to do return weapon mesh. Like so. And in character base, we're going to go current weapon, get weapon mesh, set, let's see, hidden in game. We're going to give it to true. And there's no children, so we're good there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing here. The current weapon's being changed to the next weapon. Get okay, weapon mesh, set hidden in game. False. Already. Oh, I thought it actually loaded up properly this time. <laughs> yeah, that would have been too easy. Alrighty. Now we switch. So it does not seem like it is. Oh, everything's playing. <laughs> it's just not uh, visible here. So that is because we're actually setting it hidden up here entirely. So what we're going to do instead is go to get weapon mesh and set it hidden that way. Like so. And compile. Keep overlooking these small things. Minimize you. Now, currently, this is not going to be networked, but in the upcoming videos, we will make it so whenever we switch weapons, we actually will, well, we will see the other players switching the weapons in their hands as well. All right, switch up and switch up. So we now just switch through. Now I'm going to do one more little binding here, and we're going to kind of do the opposite. So we're going to go to project settings and put add a new action mapping. We're going to call this one switch previous weapon. And this one's going to be mouse wheel down. Save it. And let's add it to the uh, inputs. So copy that. Do another one. Switch previous weapon. And let's create a new function for just that. So switch previous weapon. <sighs> Do a bit of refactoring.
That means I probably have a function here. Maybe not. Create the implementation. There we go. So we're going to take all this and just copy it. Change it to switching to previous. We're going to set the input here to switch to previous weapon. We're going to check this. So pretty much if weapon index instead minus one is greater than or equal to zero, then we will subtract from weapon index. So we're pretty much doing the opposite. Now we can compile and give it a test. So now we should be able to switch back and forth and yeah, just do everything accordingly. All right, something failed, probably because I closed the engine or the project while I was compiling. And once we have this good and set up, we can do a couple of things. We can start working on our wall weapons, so like purchasing weapons and all that kind of stuff, as well as working on our, um, I would have to make some animations. So for animations for putting a new, the weapon away and an animation for putting pulling the new weapon out, that kind of stuff. So we have the STG, throw wheel up, pistol. I can't go any farther. I go back down. And this should hold the ammo. So I'm going to run dry, like so. I'm going to switch, switch back. I'm now empty here. Switch to the pistol. I'm still empty. I reload. Switch back. Still empty. Let's also remember your fire mode. So I press B, and semi auto. Go back. Still in semi auto. Switch to full. And we are good to go. So we now have multiple weapons. So we are pretty much good to go. Now I'm setting this up so we can have as many guns as we want. This will be altered here soon, but the reason I'm doing that is because in the future I do plan on adding uh, small little console commands that do a couple small things. So for example, uh, in World at War on PC, we had a command called give all, and that gave you every single weapon pretty much for the map, as well as some miscellaneous ones. And I want to have a feature similar to that. So that way, whenever we type in that command, I want to check it and see, make sure we're only in single player, so it only works in single player, even though players could obviously cheat it. But it'll, that way, it'll give us all the weapons, and we can switch through them, test them, play with them, do whatever we want. And when we're playing normally, like normal gameplay, I want to have it so that it will simply not allow us to have more than two. So we'll have just two just two guns. That's all. So we have the basics for our weapon switching set up. And in the next video we're probably going to make it so it loops so as you keep going around you will uh it'll keep cycling. You don't have to go all the way to the end and then try to go all the way back. Instead you'll go to the end and then back to the front. So we'll probably set that up and possibly start working on replicating this depending on how long that video ends up being. So if you like what you're saying here and you want to help support me, my Patreon's linked in the description as well as my Discord server in case you have any questions or just want help with anything or just want to chat. So as always, I will see you in the next one.